Hey guys, today I'm going to be installing a trailer brake controller on my 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime, but these instructions should be good for most 2019 and up RAV4s. But yeah, I got a Hopkins Insight trailer brake controller and a 7 pin plug for the rear, and we're going to install all of that today. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So first off, there's a few things you're gonna need in order to make this thing work. First, you wanna pick a trailer brake controller that you like for your setup, for your car, whatever you prefer. There's a lot of different ones out there. I've always preferred the wire versions, but there are wireless versions. I'm not gonna get into all the differences, but this is gonna be a wired install. And I went with a Hopkins Insight brake controller. Next, you're gonna need a trailer brake harness adapter that's available for any 2019 Toyota RAV4. There are two main ones that I've seen, a Kurt and a Takancha. So I went with the second one, the Takancha. Very easy install. You'll see that in a little bit too. And then you'll need a seven pin plug for the rear of your car. And again, you can go with whatever style you want. Uh, I went with a pretty heavy duty one. And yes, I had to drill a hole in the rear bumper. That was a little nerve wracking, but it had to get done in order to install this. You're also gonna to wanna to buy a spool of 12 gauge wire so you can wire up the brake controller. I think that was all the items I needed to buy. So let's go ahead and start this install. First off, we're gonna start with the four pin trailer harness. Now, if you're just gonna to be towing some light duty trailers and you never need anything with trailer brakes, this is the only part that you're gonna need. This will give you the four pin plug that you'll have on, on most trailers that are out there. But my T-Rex camper is one example that has trailer brakes. So that's why I wanted to have the seven pin plug option. But anyway, so I already have the four pin plug installed. I'm gonna take the camera over there and I'll show you guys exactly what it looks like. I know this looks kind of crazy having everything all torn apart like this, but it really is very easy. Everything pretty much just snaps together or apart. But imagine all of this is complete. First, obviously you take out the floor that's in here and any rubber mat that you might have. So you take that all completely out. That just lifts right out. Then you'll need to remove this panel that's right here and that just clips up. You can actually see one of the clips right there that actually broke, uh, which is very common. But you just lift that one up, take that out. You don't even need to remove the spare tire. I did because I just wanted it completely out of the way. Also, you can ignore my fuse panel. I'm putting a fuse panel in here so I can have some accessories, lights, and just extra stuff back here. I have a six gauge wire going underneath there to the battery right here. Um, so ignore that part. But after you do remove this part here, there is a big plastic panel that goes right here. There's just a Phillips screw on this side and a Phillips screw on this side. You can actually see the hole right there. Uh, so you remove those two screws and that whole piece lifts up and out. Then you have to remove the side panel here. I did this a few days ago, so I actually can't remember, uh, but I think there was a screw over here somewhere. And then there was a 10 or 12 millimeter bolt right there. That was just a tie down actually. You can see the other one right there. So you just lift the cover off the tie down and underneath that is a bolt. You take that out. And then all of the rest of this is just clips and you just pop it all out. This might look scary, but it really was very easy. It's just clips, really, you just pull it apart. But onto the four pin Takancha connector. So I have the box mounted right here. Uh, I also use that screw right there for the ground. It is a stainless steel self-tapping screw. That was a really good spot for it. So that's where I put mine. And off of this box, you have a few different wires. So the black one here has to go to power. In my case, I ran this to the fuse box that I put in, but in your case, you would just run this to the battery. In the RAV4 hybrids and the Prime, the battery is back here. If you're doing this in something that's not a hybrid or the Prime, then you'd have to run this wire all the way to the front through the firewall to the battery that's up under the hood over there. So it's much easier in the Prime and the hybrids. Next, we have our left trailer lights. So this is gonna come up and you can see the harnesses right up here. So this just goes in line, it's a T. So you unplug the OEM harness, which is right here. You pl plug it into here, then you plug the other side into the OEM plug that's there. Very easy. Same thing with the other side. You just have to run this cable across and it goes up under here. I actually did remove this panel as well, but it's not needed. I mean, you are able to get up there with your hand. I just took the panel off because it was easier and I was doing other stuff over there anyway. 
And then the last cable is this one. This is the four pin plug. I just used an existing OEM rubber plug that's right here. Let's see if you can, it's kind of dark in my camera, but hopefully you can see that there's an existing rubber plug right there that I used. And that goes down underneath the car and would come out back here. Now, again, if you only need that, then you're all done. That's pretty much what you need to do. You put everything back together and you have your four pin plug, but that's only half the battle if you're doing a full brake controller setup like I am. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to get to the reverse wire. This isn't something you have to have. It really depends on your trailer. But if you have reverse lights on your trailer, then it is nice to include them. I mean, why not? And you can't access that wire down here anywhere because the reverse lights are in the door. So we're gonna to have to take off the door panel and run the wire down to this little plug that I have down here. So the you can see back here, these are the reverse lights for the car. So if you do wanna include these, it's really not that hard, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. Very cloudy and dark day right now, unfortunately, but hopefully you guys can see this. Here's my back door. The way to access this is you just get a little pry tool a little plastic one and gently pry off this little cover. So it's just a little cover right here. And then underneath here, there are two 10 millimeter bolts, one here, one here, and the same thing over there. And then the rest of these panels, all the panels here are just clips. So you just grab them and pull them right off. There's really no science to it. Those are the only screws in the whole thing. So once you get all of this off, then you can access the wire. And right now I'll show you which wire to tap and then how to get the wire down into your car. I had my wife help me last night and we tested and this blue wire on this reverse light is the 12 volt wall in reverse. So I just tapped into that wire right there and ran it along this path here through this out here. And I just need to lift up this, tuck the wire away and it's gonna come down here and join the rest of the wires I'm here working on. So the next clip, I'm gonna go up front under the dash and I'll show you how I tap the brake signal at the brake switch and then we'll continue on with the brake controller installation. All right, here we are under my dash. Yeah, it looks kind of crazy, but it's really only a couple panels that you have to drop and take down. But we have to get access to the brake wires. You have to get to the harness that's right here in my hands, but it's actually up where my finger is pointing at. So it's just behind these climate controls. So you have to take this bolt out right here, pull that aside a little bit. I can't get it to come out. There's a bolt over there, but I took it out and I just can't seem to get this hard plastic out here. So you just have to kind of gently bend it out of the way so you can gain access to the harness that's right there. So I unplugged it. Then I popped out this clip where my thumb is right there, which is behind this metal piece. And then I pulled out this harness right here. And then there is another clip at my index finger right up here. So once you get all that stuff out, it's really not too hard. I know it looks kind of scary, but it's really not that bad. Once you get that all apart, then I just cut back the electrical tape off this harness right here. And I pulled the flex loom off. And the brake wire is this white wire right in here. It's not the white and black. It's a solid white wire that's right in here. It looks like it's the third one over from the right. So now that I have this accessible, I'm going to tap that wire and then put everything back together because uh, hopefully that's it. <laughs> uh, this is the wire I need to tap. This is a 20 gauge white wire. I have it cut to about three feet because I only need to get it to the kick panel right over here to the uh, brake controller. A lot of people have their ideas of how to tap a wire. I hate those little T-clamp things. Uh, I think they're really bad. They compromise the wire when you clamp them down. I've been doing this for decades and I've never had a failed connection by taking a pin tool and poking a hole through it, sliding this through, and then wrapping the, in this case, you see the silver wire around the copper wire. In the past, I would get a soldering iron out and do that as well, but I don't really think it's necessary. I've been doing the same method for years and I've never ever had one fail. So now I'm gonna wrap this around and I'll show you what it looks like. So there we are. It is very tight. I'm gonna wrap that with electrical tape now and that connection is never gonna come apart naturally under normal use. You can still pull it apart, which is nice. So nothing is permanent, but it is never just gonna fall apart inside this car. And you're not using any crimps that are compromising the wire. All right, that's wrapped with electrical tape. Now I'm gonna tuck it back in the flex loom. All wrapped up, and once I get this all tucked back in here, you're not even going to be able to tell that this isn't factory. 
All right, there's a little bit of a sharp edge right here on this piece of metal. It's actually pretty smooth, but I don't want it to chafe this little wire. So I added some flex loom just to this part right here, and then it comes out right there. So I'll tape this end here so it won't move and put everything back together. But anytime you get near some sharp edges like that, you definitely want to use some flex loom to protect the wire. Okay, you can kind of see the bolt that's back there. I know it's blurry, but that's the bolt back there that I had to put back in. I've got the airbag back in place. There is a 10 millimeter here and one more 10 millimeter right over there. This piece here is just clips and this piece here is clips with one 10 millimeter down here. All right, it has started to pour, unfortunately. So I'm gonna to try to make this super, super quick. But this red wire is the power coming from the fuse panel that I installed back here. Uh, obviously you're not gonna have this fuse panel, so you're gonna to have to go to the battery that's over there. And you just run that through here under the seat, through here, tuck it in all these panels here, and then run it up to the brake controller that I now have mounted up there. Then from the brake controller, you have I have this black wire coming back and this is going to go to the seven pin plug in the rear of the car and this is the signal for your trailer's brakes to turn on this is something separate this is just a switch that i had installed but oh man unfortunately i gotta quit it because it's pouring really hard but that's how you wire it up all right and here's my seven pin plug just got everything wired up this is what everything looks like right here I use crimp connector, ring terminals right there. Everything is nice and tight. I don't have any dielectric grease or anything with me, but it would be good to just to gunk all of this up with dielectric grease. I might have to get some and do that later. And this is the little piece that goes around here to cover everything up. You can see I drilled a hole. That was a little nerve wracking, drilling a hole in the brand new bumper of my car. I think that was a two inch hole and it fit this perfectly. And this is gonna look great right up in there. I actually did find some dielectric grease. I should have put that on there in between all these connections, but oh well, hopefully it's good enough. And I did put a little electrical tape there and I still have to flex loom the rest of the wires. So I just finished getting my seven pin plug all wired up and mounted. It kind of sucks to drill a hole in the bumper, but the location is just perfect for what I'm towing. And it also actually seems quite strong. I thought I'd have to do some backing in here to support this plug some more but so far it seems really good it seems like it's going to be nice strong and secure now i'm going to try to get under here and try to show you guys how i ran the wires well it's pretty dark <laughs> there is an echo uh but right up here where my hand is is where the seven pin plug comes through and then i have some i think this is three quarter inch flex loom for all the wires and i just tucked it underneath this bracket right here this is a bumper bracket and then panning over to the right it is inside this U channel for the trailer hitch. And then it comes up over here and goes up into the car through this rubber bushing that I showed you guys earlier inside the car. All right, and here's my final product. The Hopkins Insight Brake Controller is a really nice unit. It's a three piece unit. So I really like that because I can hide components wherever I wanted to put them rather than having one of those big ugly boxes mounted to the dash or under the dash or something like that. So the main box, the brains of it all is hidden up under here. And I just have that screwed into the kick panel right here. It's really easy to get all the wires tucked under there. There's a lot of room. So that's where I mounted the brains of the Hopkins brake controller. And then over here, I have my display. So right here, this is just double stick tape right to the dash. And then I ran the wire from here, down here, and then over to the, the main unit right over there. It's actually, I can tuck that wire a little bit better later. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, that's a display that'll show you the amount of braking that is happening. So the percentage of power going to the brakes. And then over here, I have the brake booster. So this is if you're driving along and you know you need to stop quickly or if your trailer starts wobbling, this is what you wanna to use to apply brakes to your trailer. All brake controllers are gonna have a brake booster. Sometimes they're a dial, sometimes they're a lever like this. They can be different things, but that's where I have this one mounted. It worked well for me in my Model X. And yeah, so that's how the front looks. Well, there you have it, guys. That's how you install a brake controller in a 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime, but this should work with pretty much any 2019 and up RAV4. However, the brake wire might be a little bit different. I think accessing it at the actual brake pedal switch 
is going to be good for pretty much everybody but i've heard you can get the brake wire in the driver's sill plate as well in the gas version so there's more information about that online i just i don't have one so i can't show you but i really hope this helped if you have any questions definitely post them below i'm usually around for questions and comments and i try to respond to everybody so if you have any questions definitely post them below otherwise feel free to give a thumbs up and subscribe if you like see you guys